brisket's king in Texas. If you can't cook brisket right, then you don't need to have a barbecue restaurant in Texas. We're serving briskets not only by the pound, but we're serving for tacos. What I wanted to do is represent what I thought was true Tejano cooking. You know, I grew up grilling, smoking, barbecuing, and then the Mexican flavors kind of just in tandem with it. And uh, I wanted to represent for what I thought was the Chicano and Tejano culture here in Texas, pushing out what we do at the home. We are in South Austin at Valentina's Tex-Mex Barbecue. For breakfast, we have our chicken fajita breakfast taco. Everyone knows what that is. And we're doing a spicy egg, so we need some serranos chopped up. People want barbecue. Let's have a good day. Yes, sir. Yeah, so here we have our, our pits. Everything's named after my favorite bands, or the lead singers. We got Maynard, Cornell, and we have Cobain. This pit, actually, the day that I went to go pick it up from my welder on the radios, we heard that uh, Cornell had passed away, so it was meant to be. We do like traditional Texas barbecue, right? Except we use mesquite wood. A lot of people don't use it for smoking. They use it more for grilling because they're afraid of it, thinking that it's super powerful. The mesquite puts out earthy and sweet notes to it. And when it's used proper, it's one of the best things with beef, in my opinion. Whenever these pits are not cooking, if you put your head down into the barrel, it smells like kind of like dark chocolate or like burnt chocolate brownies. It's awesome, it smells really great. I do try and have a balance of more aged wood and then a little bit of greener wood. You can see the difference in, in some of them. See this right here, that yellow? This is gonna have more moisture in it. And I'm looking for some that are a little bit lighter. Like this one right here is a little bit brighter. This one will have less moisture in it. And you can tell the difference. This is a big log, this is a smaller one, but they weigh about the same. I like to have the bottom logs kind of facing out with our with our air this is our high-tech oxygen blower yeah so when it burns you smell like grass fire you know what i mean but when you cook you get the earthy and sweet notes from it all right so now we got our fires going this fire will probably be like you know over 500 degrees right here but the actual uh, internal temp of the pit we're looking for about 225 to 240. we want to be able to trim some brisket right now and we want to start loading them up and seasoning them here soon so they're on by about 11 o'clock cooking. We're trying to make the briskets all the same shape. Like, look at this one right here. This one's huge. And when they go on the smoker, we don't want to be opening and closing and have to rotate so much. So we're looking to have most of the briskets kind of have the same shape and size. Harley Ranch has really great Angus cows here in Texas. Been around for a long time. We use their prime beef, you know, grass fed, but then they are finished off with grain at the very end. We're serving briskets not only by the pound, but we're serving for tacos. That allows me to treat the brisket slightly different. See, I'm gonna take most of this deco out because it doesn't render anyway. Our briskets have a lot of marbling. They have a lot of good juices that maintain in it anyway. And all the leftover stuff we'll use because we only get about 50% yield out of this. You know, this brisket might weigh like seven pounds cooked and it's probably like, you know, like 14 right now. And so we gotta try and make up for that by figuring other stuff out. Like that's why we talk about making uh, tips, like stuff like this. This is good for like our sausage and these beef tips will get smoked and braised and I'll make brisket guisada or street tacos or something out of it. I'm gonna finish this one brisket right here and then we'll get ready to season up. Maybe we should go to town. The brisket rub is a combination of our red rub, pepper, and salt. Our red rub is something that we make here, but it has salt, pepper, garlic, sugar, paprika, cayenne, chili powder. Brisket is probably the hardest thing that we cook. I think it's the hardest thing that anybody cooks in Texas because you're striving to have 100% perfection. You put on 400 pounds of brisket, you want 400 pounds to be perfect. You don't want to lose it. There's almost 48 hours worth of preparation going in to produce something that's going to be consumed in less than like three minutes. Okay, so we're looking for us particularly here is to be able to have the briskets cook almost evenly all at the same time. We place the briskets depending on size and shape in different spots. So we have the ones that are bigger towards the back and the, and the side of the firebox or the smokestack because you're gonna get a little bit more heat there. The smaller ones are placed in the middle, but we want the fat edge 
to be facing the metal or the doors because you're gonna get a little bit more heat on that side. We're gonna shut these doors and we're not gonna look at them for at least six, seven hours. These vegetables right here, I'm gonna roast off real quick for um, another one of our plates called Tapikenia, but smoked peppers and onions, basically. They need some right now, so I'm gonna try and get it done real quick. So our menu is based off Texas barbecue and then the influence of the Mexican culture. Those types of things that, we, that were represented in the home cooking, coming through where you have barbecue, fresh tortillas, avocado, roasted corn, roasted peppers, and uh, different styles of, of using fire and smoke. Right behind y'all, coming in, hot. Hey, keep three people on the line, keep running. We got those tickets down, let's go. Can the chico queso ready for this? Chicken where are you at on sausage? So we do like about 24 pounds of pork, and about 12 pounds of beef. The fat ratio, we kind of let it just happen naturally. We try and keep chunks in here so we get about 25, 30% of fat. When he has everything all mixed up, then we'll case some here. Uh, we've been working together for years before this as well. So we've had this brotherly relationship, but where we could tell each other, you know, where we're doing something wrong and, you know, accept it and, you know, hopefully correct it. So this is our OG sausage that we're about to mix right here. We got onion powder, salt, pepper, garlic, our red rub, Mexican oregano. Here we have some uh, diced poblanos. Right here we have a uh, garlic and cilantro that's been blended up. The thing that is like, that concerns us the most, brisket, because you want it to be perfect every time. But sausage, sausage is pretty intense, you know, like the whole process to it, it's a long process, it takes a while. My brother and I grew up a little bit different because of our age differences. You know, I'm seven years older than him. I grew up on the south side of San Antonio. I always played sports, but also kind of like, like the neighborhood feel and grew up around the lowriders and stuff. And I, I kind of liked that a lot. And we moved to like north central San Antonio. So he didn't really grow up on the south side like I did. He once told me, how did I come out so gangster and you came out so hipster? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just looking at for you kind of to fill in the, the casing without pushing the casing too much where it's super tight right now because I want to have some room so I can link up the sausage. Barbecue is being able to take a piece of meat that typically wouldn't taste good or something that's not preferable and being able to transform it into something very delicious and delicate and decadent and juicy and tender and tasteful, right? Barbecue is low and slow, just like that truck back over there. This is a 1961 Apache. I've always uh, been into low riders and older trucks. If this truck was perfect, perfect, I probably wouldn't drive it too much, you know? I like having a little bit of imperfections with it, just like food, just little imperfections in all the food too, you know? Check this boy out that's been going for a while now. Whenever we wrap, we don't ever gauge the temperature. We go mostly for the way it looks, the color. So this one's got a nice spark on it. It's been going about nine, 10 hours. This is what we would like the brisket to look right before it's about to get wrapped. We try to have them all come off around the same time because we have a pretty strict schedule, especially when the weekend comes and the pit space that we have. This one's got wrapped about 10 hours in and then it's another three hours on uh, wrapped. This is what we use, vermicelli, fideo noodles, okay? This box, it's like 13 cents or something like that, right? This is what my mom would feed our family on, you know, all of us. Fideos, is like, you know, it's a it's traditional Spanish and Mexican dish. We use uh, the vermicelli noodles cooked with butter and they're browned. And you create a broth, a tomato-based broth that has spices, a little bit of chili powder, cayenne, maybe heavy on garlic, maybe some oregano, maybe not. Sometimes with broths or soups, you, we would start with like aromatics for the onions, but it doesn't really need that. This is gonna be so much packed with flavor. We're just gonna cook these onions down kind of sweat into the broth. It was a favorite dish of mine growing up. I ate it too much and got sick of it. <laughs> when I got older, that's all I could think about was that kind of food. The plate that I grew up eating had fideo served up. You take these noodles, once they brown a little bit, and you drop them into the hot broth, and you serve 
the noodles with the broth. And you have refried beans, which we've already made. And we have ground beef or beef picadillo. And this is some of the meat here. This is that same brisket that's been ground up and it's been smoked on the pit to create our, our, our smoked beef. It's kind of like a version of like Mexican goulash or something. <laughs> so they were serving our fideo local taco. So it's a version of this dish packed into this big ass taco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember early age, about four or five years old, helping my grandmother make tortillas, flour tortillas in particular. We're in San Antonio, so you're coming from like the northern Mexico and South Texas region, and you have more of like the Sonoran influence, and that's where the flour tortilla comes from. That fresh flour tortilla and the process it takes to hand mix and to feel that dough and to push them out and have something that's like a replacement for fresh white bread or something. That's super important for me to have as a component here. This is a very good size to work with to where we come in and we're pinching and we're doing 50 to 60 grams. So then these will sit for about 20 minutes or so and then they'll be ready to press. Flour tortillas it has to stand up to the effort and time that's put into the brisket and needs that catalyst to go along with it. And that's important to me because it's just part of who we are. So this is a, our BNS Co mini wedge. You have two Teflon plates that are heated right here. It's about 400 degrees inside of here. And you need that to press the flour. This is something we don't use for corn. Corn is a cold press, it's gonna be a hot press. Looking at those dough balls that we made earlier, now they're ready to roll. Roll them up in the flour a little bit, drop them into the press, and then we're looking for this size. And the tortillas have to cook in roughly about five seconds or so to get the nice color, a little bit of the char marks on them. Nice, soft, fluffy tortillas. If I was gonna serve packaged tortillas or buy them from a store, I would get my head cut off and my hands cut off by my parents, you know? There's like no way I could, I could, I could live with myself and they would just kind of put their head down. Yeah, so we made the Real Deal Holyfield earlier. It's pretty funny, man, because that kind of like exploded unexpectedly. When we first opened up, my dad's hanging out and says, hey, make me some huevos rancheros. So I start frying up some potatoes, make some bacon. I'm also listening to like rap at the same time too. I'm listening to like Snoop at the same time, right? Instead of giving him his huevos rancheros plate, I used a roller and rolled out a bigger tortilla for him, put it on the plate as the base, Put the refried beans, potatoes, fried egg, strip of bacon, and added a fat slice of brisket to it. And when I took it out to him, I put it in front of him, and he was like, what's this? I was like, that's the real deal Holyfield. So it was kind of like a joke at first, and my dad loved it. He came back, he's like, that was awesome, man. Started running it on the weekends. People loved it, kept asking for it, and we put it on the menu for good. We always wanted to create a culture, you know what I mean? At Valentina's, it's about family, it's about making stuff with love, it's about cooking from the heart and from the soul. And being able to have some sort of like nostalgic feeling and connect with people, because that's what food is about. It's about sharing, it's about the time that you have with friends and family, and like the conversations that you can have around food, and that's super important. you can't be smiling and happy here, then you have no business cooking at Valentina's. You can throw away all the aspects and techniques of like proper cooking or, or whatever it is, experience, you can throw that all out the door. Bottom line is, is coming in here with the right attitude and the right reasons to cook. It has nothing to do with skill, you know what I'm saying? It has everything to do with drive and the will to want to do it. Being able to have that attitude allows us to be able to be like barbecue for the people kind of thing, you know what I mean?